Yes, you read that right. It's a podcast about sex in detail. This is the episode that many, many, many people out there have been waiting for for the longest time. We've got one of India's premier health experts, one of the world's premier health experts. He's also one of the world's premier wellness experts, Luke Coutinho. The world of royalty, the world of films, the world of sport, and the world of billionaires turns to this man when it comes to health and wellness advice. And on the Renvi show today, he's going to break down sex in detail from an ethical, loving relationship standpoint. You guys are going to enjoy this episode. Just before I let you slip in, let me remind you, this month was massive for me on a personal level. Became an investor for the first time in my life at age 27. Invested in a company called Ready, Set, Jet. The products are linked down below. Make sure you check them out. Make sure you show your support. But for now, Luke Coutinho and Ranveer Alawadia breaking down the act of sex on the Ranveer show. So we're with Luke Coutinho here again on the Ranveer show. Uh, you're a TRS all-star. Today we're talking... What's up, bro? What's up? <laughs> Thank you for being here again. It's a pleasure. Yeah. We're talking about love and sex in this podcast. Oh, okay. okay. Let, me, let me remove all my masks. First, <laughs> right? Let's keep it real. All the masks are off. Okay, go for it. Um, yeah. We've spoken about sex a lot on this show. We've spoken about concepts related to sex. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just want to dive straight in. I believe in CTAs, which are call to actions. Mm -hmm. Let's give the young listeners initially mm -hmm. a guide to good sex. Okay. Or, you know, maybe you could begin with what's the role of sex in the human existence? Mm -hmm. Then how do you enhance your sex life? We can talk about everything from foreplay yeah. to <clears throat> bedroom techniques to food Right. to stretching and yoga if need be. Yeah. To, yeah. Of, of course, love. Of course, the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. of it. Okay. So, Luke, I'm going to hand it to you. Uh, you take the conversation forward. Okay, cool. So, I think there's no rule book around sex. Again, it's an energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we can change the energy right now by moving from the word sex to lovemaking. Mm -hmm. Massive difference. Massive difference. Okay. So when I talk today, you know, you know, keep all this feminism, all this stuff out. Okay. I am talking my story based on my opinions, what people make out of it. But if you're trying to take textbook knowledge of sex, you know, a lot of guys come and say, hey, Luke, I'm forwarding you this cosmopolitan article where they said 15 ways to please your woman. Okay. And stuff like that. I said, if you want to be successful with that woman, okay, you think of 15 unique ways to please her, not by the opinion of a journalist mm. who has collated what women like. And a lot of women don't know what they like. The same way before the feminists jump up, a lot of men don't know what they like. Mm. As simple as that. We all go through our first experiences more driven with hormones and stuff like that and all of these things. I think the first thing that I want to break right now, because we counsel these young kids and stuff like that, I can tell every young kid out there, every young male, okay, if your self-worth is dependent on the size of your penis, Okay, you have a big problem right now. Mm. Okay, I know porn has made you think like, you know, the bigger you are, the more happier the woman. Now, today we've worked with models, actresses, beautiful women, pretty women, normal women, all of that stuff. Okay, I asked them one question. What makes you happy in bed? Okay, not one of them till date have said the size of the penis. Not, not one of them. They say that, Luke, okay, we want to feel secure. We want to feel appreciated. We want to feel cared for. I get that in a guy. I'll get wet. The foreplay is going to be good. I'll give my all, okay? The second thing that guys have to know about it is a woman doesn't have to orgasm all the time for you to be successful. Mm. Women have said it all the time that we love orgasms. We love them, okay? But we don't get them all the time. So if you've not given your woman an orgasm every time you've made love to her, doesn't mean you're a failure. Mm. But when you keep watching porn, like every 30 seconds, a woman's having an orgasm. So you, your benchmark of success is something that isn't true. Mm. Mm. It isn't true. So number one advice, if you are comparing your life, your sex life with porn right now, I can guarantee you, you either have premature ejaculation, okay, you can't keep it up, okay, and you have insecure feelings mm. because it's a wrong benchmark. You are designing to fail for yourself, yeah. okay? And all of us have done these things. All of us, when we, like, the time back in college, we had magazines like Hustler and Playboy and stuff like that. We didn't have the internet back in Goa at that point and stuff, a few clips of videos and stuff like that and unlimited knowledge of sex was like, oh, it's got to be that way. 
But we learn and evolve. That's a phase that you're going through. Mm. But don't link your self-worth with that. Mm. I can tell you upfront right now, before we come to the main parts of sex, if you're eating crap, too much of sugar, too much of oil, not exercising, there is no reason that you're going to have a strong erection and keep it up. Mm. Period. Mm. Okay? It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because we know too much of sugar, junk food impairs blood circulation. What keeps you hard is your blood circulation. Smoking cigarettes? Smoking cigarettes, definitely. 100% down. Alcohol as well. Okay, now, but a lot of people come say, but Luke, you know, when I drink alcohol, I, I really, you know, I feel like doing it and stuff. I said, did your woman enjoy it after that? I said, no, I couldn't really keep it up. But what, what has alcohol done? Given you a sense of power. Why? Because it drops your gates. When you drink alcohol, you can say so many things that you can't say when you're not an alcohol. But again, everyone's different. There are some people who drink alcohol and say, I can only do it when I have alcohol. Mm. Everyone's different. Mm. But I'm trying to say, it comes down to science again. Okay, when you're intoxicated, okay, your liver is so busy trying to clean out your system and stuff like that. Blood flow is less, circulation is low. So do the math. Works for you, do it. Yeah. My point when it comes to sex, okay, again, when I ask a woman, what do you like in sex? What position? You know what they say? It depends. We don't have a fixed position that we enjoy. One day we like it doggy style. One day we like it missionary. One day we don't want to have sex. We just want foreplay. One day we don't even want that. We just want to cuddle in bed. For that, mm. that's great sex for us. Mm. But again, the media is showing you that it's got to be this explosive orgasm and every guy is like, is she getting it? Is she getting it? Is she getting it? All of us, we've been there, been there, done that. The first question a guy, did, did you orgasm? Did you climax? Did you come? And stuff like that. And a woman says, you know, we hate that question because mm. it doesn't matter. If we want to, we'll tell you to keep going. It's as simple as that. Mm. So communication. Mm. Communication. Yep. You know, yeah. I have this uh, thing I've figured over the years. Mm -hmm. I believe that while you can break down sex as a very complicated concept, and you can yeah. keep improving at it. There's two basic ground rules or ground concepts when it comes to great sex. Mm -hmm. One is speak about sex mm -hmm. in non-sexual scenarios. Yeah. In a very mm -hmm. non-sexual way. When you're talking to a girl who you have a platonic relationship mm -hmm. with, who's your friend, if she's talking about sex, don't don't look at her in a dirty way. Yeah. I just talk about the subject. It doesn't have, don't bring the emotion yeah. in it. You'll get yeah. to learn a lot. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially from women. Yeah. And many guys are not capable of that. Yeah. Because the moment sex comes out of a woman's mouth, they yeah. start visualizing yeah. about that woman. That's yeah. how guys... Yeah, and they think they're loose and they're... Exactly. I had a woman who said, Luke, you know, I feel slutty at times because mm. I'm turned on. The guys are going... It doesn't make me a slut. And... I was like, yeah, wow. Mm. Just listen to her. She's like, I feel that. You guys, you all feel horny. You all feel like you're like animals. You all want to jump on us and stuff. We respect that feeling if you respect us the same way you respect us. Mm. If I want to feel dirty, talk dirty in bed, it's because I'm turned on. Mm. But I do that and I'm termed as a slut. Mm. And now no matter how good the guy is, I will never ever come with yeah. that guy again or yeah. orgasm with that guy again. So you see, you're, you're very right about that. Yeah. You, when you talk about it, don't look at that person. If a woman is being vulnerable and talking about her sexual fantasies, a lot of guys say, oh, wow. And they start fantasizing that they're mm. gonna be with that girl and stuff mm. and they mess it up all over there. Mm. So you've broken down honest communication right yeah. then, so right then. Honest yeah. communication is one. Yeah. And the second thing I'd like to highlight is extended foreplay. And this is not just mm. physical foreplay. Foreplay yeah. begins in conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. It starts from the time you've picked her up, from the time you hold a hand, till the time you do all of these things. Today, again, foreplay in normalcy is, oh, I'll go down on her. That's mm. going to turn her on mm. and stuff like that. And he, he can be down on her and she's not even getting a little bit wet because she's not ready. Yeah, yeah. She's like, you know, I think a woman's body and a man's body is, it's like a well-oiled machine, you know, mm -hmm. lever. Everything has to work together for it to start working. Exactly. You can't just go on and say, oh, wow, I read in Cosmopolitan that, you know, women love their nipples to be fondled yeah. and sucked on or a guy likes this and they just go and they'll start doing their stuff mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, you, you can lead. The, yeah. And we've all done that. We, I think every second guy who started off is always like, you know, I'm in the, am I in the right place mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. We've gone through that. That's fun. Don't, don't yeah. get so attached to it. But again, it's a process, like you said. It starts from the time... You know, you probably pick her up, you start talking to her, you lay that whole thing mm -hmm. out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can go on and on about emotional and intellectual foreplay. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, just human beings, the way we're wired, we love vulnerability. Yeah. So if as a man, you're able to show a certain vulnerability to yourself, that could be career insecurity, yeah. life insecurity, mm -hmm. physical insecurity, emotional relationship based yeah. insecurity. And by that, I don't mean possessiveness. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, just showing your real colors. Yeah. That's foreplay. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously, intellectual sex is also foreplay, mm -hmm. where you're exchanging deep thoughts about yeah. life, about mm -hmm. yourself, about each other. Yeah. 
um which is why a lot of women actually prefer older men mm-hmm. because women and men definitely mature at different rates yeah yeah so it's the intellectual uh, part that they get attracted to mm-hmm. see let's understand uh physical attraction chemical attraction i'll i'll break it down okay because uh, we've always tried to understand this okay there's a girl and a boy there's conformity they mm. share the same you know likes dislikes music okay so you're moving closer on the basis of conformity you're conforming to each other's ideals now as you come closer you know the dopamine's going up you hold a hand there's oxytocin going up it's a chemical reaction mm. okay and i'll mm. tell you why it's a chemical reaction it's never love at first sight I don't believe in that. I don't believe it depends on your definition. It's first the chemical reaction, okay? Because the dopamine, everything is giving you that sensation. Everything together. Now, and I'll tell you exactly why. So you have the greatest sex life for the first year. After a while, you know, it comes down. They like they say the honeymoon period. Why? Okay? Now, for the relationship to grow, dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin, it's, you know, there's overstimulation of it. Mm. You've had maximum sex. Mm. Now for the for the partnership to mature, I need to find new dopamine and new oxytocin, you know, generators through conversation. That's wow. how relationship grows. So if you're building a relationship only on sex, your relationship is going to die at some point. Build it. It can some start off with great sex, but then mature couples which I'm learning now at the age of 41, you have to build up other aspects mm. like I can have a conversation and wow my dopamine stimulated attraction again if you're only dependent on sexual attraction it's going to die it's mm. over stimulation mm. that's why they say the honeymoon period oh the sex was great the first year now my husband is not even in the mood now my wife is in whatever because why you're still dependent on the stimulation source which is over stimulated mm. what have you done to generate new sources holidays travel movies together holding hands doing all the things that excited you in the first place Mm. That's how you keep it alive. Man, you know what you're basically saying is self growth fuels a good sex life. Absolutely. Because when you grow yourself, you have more stuff to talk about. You have more stuff to exchange. To exchange, to talk, to, you know, vulnerable stuff like, you know, like you know, with you're changing all the time. I can't expect Ranveer to be the same on the next show we do together. You have mm. evolved in many ways. Mm. You can't expect me to be the same. We can't expect mm. our partners to be. But the men men will come and say, "Oh, my wife When we were dating, she was like this, this, this. She was into me. She was that. Then the guy, the girl, was saying, "When my guy, he was, he would buy me gifts. He would do this, whatever." Yes, at that point, that's who y'all were. Each of y'all have also changed. Now, can y'all communicate and you know go up and say, you know, I loved it when you bought me flowers. Mm. Any guy will say like, "Wow, I'll go and buy her flowers." Mm. Instead of like, "You don't buy me flowers anymore," and you start the nagging. All of that stuff. Which guy is gonna want to buy flowers? Or the same, opposite sex. I'm mm. gonna talk both before. the fems wake up you know so my whole point is uh you have to evolve mature of mm. course the sex is going to be you're with a partner for x amount of years you've tried every position in kama sutra if you're flexible and agile and you can do anything what else is there to try what else is there to try and then you say like a woman doesn't turn me anymore mm. turn me on anymore let me become bisexual or let me change my gender example okay but sex is one part of your life for dopamine If I've built ten other mechanisms, I have a balance in my life. Mm. If I haven't, I am going to change my partner. Yeah. I am going to have affairs. I am going to pro- probably become bisexual after I've tried every possible position because it's dopamine. Once you've done it ten times, a hundred times, the same position, new positions, it doesn't excite you anymore. It's called overstimulation. Yeah. It's not our decision. It's the way chemistry works. Hundred um, percent. I'm going to say something a little spicy right now, yeah. which is uh, a theory that just popped in my head. Mm. uh when it comes to long term sex breasts get saggy penises mm-hmm. get less hard mm-hmm. uh vaginas get loose mm-hmm. and guys grow out moobs yeah. with time but what <clears throat> keeps growing is the brain the brain grows mm. and if the brain is growing the brain needs to be stimulated with mm. so many other things mm. you know when i speak to my couples i have a lot of couples in the age group 6 60 70 and i ask them straight how's your sex life what's good there are some of them uh, who look our sex lives are unbelievable because they connect and because of love they connect because of love mm. and for them it's no longer about like you know there was a lady sweet 68 year old she saying look the same pleasure i would get in my 20s if my husband and i are sitting holding hands looking at a sunset i get the same feeling just in a different way <laughs> dopamine and 
Oxytocin. Wow. <clears throat> Different sources of stimulation. You're playing a video game, you're getting dopamine and oxytocin. So chemistry can't change, but the levers and the mechanisms can 100% change. Mm. That's why when a woman says that, I said, yeah, but you all want that physical. Yeah, they say, yeah, so we want, we want our gas, we want this. But look, we can get the same feeling, not physically, if we feel cared for. Mm. We want to give our all automatically, mm. automatically. So you see, these are things we learn later in life and stuff, but the young guys out there who follow this advice right now and work backwards, mm. you know, before trying to get into someone's pants, do your groundwork. Make them feel cared for, love for. It's gonna be easier. Yeah. You don't have to like go through video after video, compare yourself in the mirror with someone and then assume that, oh, I'm not getting lucky tonight because my skin is dark. I'm mm. not getting like no, you're, you're, not, you're not getting lucky tonight because you've not said the right things. Mm. You've not laid the foundation. Mm. It's not mm. because you're dark. You're not because you're whatever. Sometimes you see really pretty women with men who I'm not going to say are ugly or fat, but you know, you say it's a common thing. Mm. How did she get that guy? And then, oh, he must be rich. <laughs> you know, or the same thing with a guy, mm. like a super handsome guy. How did she get that girl? Oh, yeah, maybe he has three other mistresses on the side. <laughs> but they don't understand that it's a beautiful example of people connecting beyond just physical sex mm. into so many different ways. Yeah. You know, so it's the more porn you watch, the more messed up you're going to yeah. be. It's as simple as that. So here's a note for young men who are trying to get into a woman's heart. Yeah. You won't get into a woman's heart by making her physically attracted to you. You won't get into a woman's heart by getting into her pants. You'll get into a woman's heart by getting into her soul. And you're going to get into her soul when you inculcate self-confidence yeah. and a positive energy. Have genuine Absolutely. intention. Absolutely. Absolutely, bro, I'll, I'll give you a simple example. No disrespect to any of the guys out there, the girls who have great physique, six packs, size zero figures, no disrespect. But you know what, we did this exercise where we took pictures of guys who are ripped six packs, whatever, and we showed them to girls. Do you find this guy attractive? Do you find mm. this guy attractive? And say, no, no, it's, it's too much. It's too much. Right. So every guy out there, build a great body. I, I like maintaining a six pack, 360 degrees of the year, uh, 360 days of the year, whatever and stuff. But that's because I feel good. But if you're building a six pack because you think you're gonna get a woman, I'm telling you right now, you're not. You're probably gonna get them and you're gonna be in the friend zone. Mm. You're gonna keep there. They want you for the pictures. <laughs> that's it. But believe me, very rarely are you gonna be lucky. Develop your skills, develop how to talk, how to do all of these things. Just having a six pack body. And I've showed many men, women with, you know, brilliant figures and they say, oh, yeah, she's probably good for a little while. Mm. I want someone deep. Mm. You know, they have the assumption that beautiful women and models are shallow. Mm. They're like assumptions and stuff. They're not. They're are intelligent, super intelligent oh, ones. But you see perception. Mm. So it's not about that. It's way, way deeper than yeah. that. And if people can figure that out, I think they can build more, you know, realistic, mm. more realistic relationships. Yeah. I mean, everyone wants great sex, mm. but it's, it doesn't end there. Mm. There'll be days when a man can't do it. There's a, there'll be days when a woman doesn't do it. It doesn't. Some men, I failed. I failed, will she love me? So like, shit, if you based your love of your relationship on your performance, bro, what's it gonna be five years down the line? By saying failed, most guys mean they either came too fast or they didn't get an erection. They didn't get an erection, they failed, or they've done everything, but the woman didn't orgasm. Mm. And women say, and these same women say, Luke, we tried to tell him that orgasm doesn't mean the sex wasn't good. Mm. For us, an orgasm is many things coming together. I could have had a bad day and that's why, you know, I'm not in clear thoughts. I'm enjoying everything, but I didn't orgasm. Mm. So when there's communication and a man understands and imagine the pressure it takes off a man that, you know, it's, it's fine. Yep. It's fine yep. if she doesn't orgasm every single time. And I'm yep. sure the woman will have a problem if she doesn't orgasm at all every single time. Mm. That's a different story, but mm. it is like that. We all go through phases like this. Yep. There are some days where you feel like you're this rock star. Yep. And then there are some days where you just feel like you can't perform and then you got to step back. What's going on in your life? Mm. Are you too stressed out? Are you sleep deprived? Are you drinking too much of alcohol? Smoking too much of weed? Ask yourself, you'll find a reason. There's always a reason why it's happening. Uh, I'm not getting an erection. Let me go and get my heart checked. Yeah, yeah. Do I have high blood pressure? Big issue for, re for erections and stuff. Do I, do I have diabetes? Big issue for erections. So we have to step back and look at these things. I've had a lot of young bros of mine who have dealt with erection related issues. Mm. And in 99.9% mm. of those cases, and there have been a ton, that'd be more yeah. than you'd imagine. And a lot of them come to me and speak about it because with my brothers, I'm very open. Mm. Um, 
I feel in all the cases, it's more a mental game than a physical game. Absolutely. But someone just needs to tell them that, that yeah. yo, this is normal. It happens. Even if you came too fast, it's normal. It's much more mental yeah. game than anything. Yeah. You need to be relaxed. You need to accept that this mm. is happening. You need to communicate with your partner that this has happened. Yeah. And often, I've, I've actually spoken to them after they've come out of that phase of their life. Mm. Uh, their female partner, their girlfriends, their wives actually had them come out of it. Where mm. they were very supportive. <clears throat> that yeah. can be... It for a guy and if there's any That's girl listening huge. to this yeah, yeah and support lots. your guy yeah support your guy and, and if it's an, it's an issue on the other side guys support oh, your yeah. girl yeah, yeah you know if she's going through a period of where you know uh it's it's painful for her mm. all of that stuff you know i mean she's not changed yeah. she's going through an issue support her through it what's the girl equivalent of not getting a bono dryness vagina dryness oh wow very painful for them you know, a, a lot of a lot of women. I mean, there are a lot of cases of women who are in married relationships who still can't have full penetration because of the pain. Wow! So you the know? solution is lube. Uh, it doesn't even work then. So then they have to work on because they've had fears in their mind. A lot of them have been either abused earlier, or they've had this oh, fear, man. or they've heard stories of you know their girlfriends who have been raped and stuff. There, there are always, and and that's where a guy has to help the girl through it. That's that's again where love is to the rescue. So understanding. Mm. Understanding. I wouldn't say love. I would say maybe for you, different perceptions. For me, I would say understanding. I would feel understood. Let me say like, 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 yeah, yeah. like I said, all masks are removed. Okay, in one night, if I don't perform well, I want understanding. Mm. You know, I don't want anything else. I want understanding and I feel good and the next day you're, you're a horse again. Mm. It's like that, you know. So mm. it can't, the body won't always work that way. So you're right about erectile dysfunction. A lot of the case, most of them are mental, mm. but a lot of them, juvenile diabetes. Wow. It's huge. The moment someone comes to me, I say, please get your blood work done first. Mm. Okay, first, because if you have diabetes, you know, a uh, simple thing for guys, let's add this to the sex uh, guideline. Uh, boys and men, we wake up with erections in the morning, sometimes a couple of them, two, three, four, five. If you find that you're not getting your morning wood, it's called morning wood, nocturnal, uh, tumescence. If you're not getting it, you want to get your heart checked and your blood sugar levels. Okay, uh, let me explain why the morning wood happens. Okay, it's not like you're, you know, a lot of women get angry, like they wake up and they find like their guy sleeping and they have an erection. Who are you thinking of? No, 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 they're not thinking of anything. It's a normal thing. Just before we wake up in the morning, the body's doing its final check. Blood flow everywhere. Blood flow to the penis, up, down. It's like a beautiful machine. That's where morning wood comes from. It's the body doing its final check. So if you're not getting your morning wood, you know, if you're very stressed, you can relate it late night, fine. But if you're constantly not getting it, you want to get your heart checked and your sugar levels checked. And, mm. and, and women listening to it, no, your guy's not thinking about a woman unless he's awake and he's got an erection probably then. Mm. But, you know, this is the science of the body. Erections are absolutely normal. It doesn't mean I have to be aroused or think of another woman if I get it. There are so many times I'm at work and stuff like that, working on something like that. You suddenly get hard. You go down again. You look. Am I, what am I thinking about? I'm, I'm working. No, it's your body just doing its stuff. Leave it. Mm. Leave it. You don't have a problem. Just chill. Leave it mm. at that point. Mm. But morning wood uh, is very, very important for men. It's a yeah. very good indicator of heart health and... Uh, wow. Diabetes as well. And it happens till you're old? Yeah, it decreases over time. It decreases over time. But you know, as we in help people to sleep better, I have men in their 50s also. Hey, Luke, you know, it's becoming a problem. It's uncomfortable. By five in the morning, I have this erection that doesn't <laughs> go. I'm saying that's that's good health for you. Mm. And that's where morning sex was brought up. Mm. Morning sex happened up from there. Wake up, turn down, finish the thing. Beautiful. Start your day. Mm -hmm. It's like that. So it's different. It's the way you perceive it. Some people yeah. love morning sex. Some doesn't. Depends on the partner. Depends on so many things. Yeah. Some men just don't get an erection in the morning. So mm -hmm. how will you have morning sex? Mm -hmm. You know, some people are night people. Some people are afternoon people. But everyone's different. That's why you cannot compare your sex life or how you perform with other people. The mm -hmm. best is ask your partner honest questions. What do you like? Does this please you when I do it? Communication is the most sexiest thing. Mm. The most sexiest thing. And a lot of women say, I like to be guided. Mm. I like to be asked what I like. Or I like to tell you what I like. But a lot of men will feel egoistic about it. Don't tell me what to do. I know what I need to do. And you just go on licking randomly and not, you know, achieving anything and stuff mm. like that. So I think communication is key. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, usually in this podcast, we have a rapid fire kind of mm -hmm. Twitterverse based okay. Q&A at the end. I think that'll be a whole other podcast when it comes to sex. So we're not going to take the audience's Q&A. I'm going to talk 
about the final part, the climax of this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> pun intended. Uh, it'll be all yeah. about the actual act of sex, right? From physical foreplay yeah. to what do you do mm-hmm. when you've penetrated, and all yeah. the what do you do after. Mm-hmm. Right before that, I would request the listeners and watchers of this podcast to share this as much as possible. We grow through your. shareability sharing it on whatsapp sharing it on your social media when you put out conversations like this that's when uh sex is going to be a much more easily spoken about topic yeah. uh i have gone out of my comfort zone to create this kind of content on beer biceps something we've never created before no one better than my big brother luke cotinho uh which brings I, me back i'm not to. an expert i've learned <laughs> this over the years yeah, but, and stuff i've probably done everything that i'm now telling people not to do yeah, you know I but mean, we learn through it it's as simple as that but you, you know, know you also come from a scientific mm-hmm. uh place yeah. this is health and the human life is something that you study day in day out you're one of the best communicators i know right. and often for a guy if you're talking to guys your age or younger about mm-hmm. sex it always becomes explicit it becomes yeah. oh man yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you talk to an older guy about it <laughs> it's a lot more educative yeah. so i hope that that's the energy people pick up from this yeah, podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and i hope there isn't some dude masturbating somewhere listening to this <laughs> that would be weird <laughs> but coming yeah. to the final uh, part of this podcast mm-hmm. um here's what i know about physical foreplay we're done speaking about emotional foreplay and warming it up when things actually start um again every woman is different every man is different everyone's bodies are different um everyone has a minimum of two spots on their body one is your obvious spot which are your genitals uh for women there's another spot which is the breasts and women have probably a third spot also which you have to find which is different for like every woman am i right in saying yeah you're right actually women have quite a few spots and the the beauty is if you discover it for them but by, by by saying by saying oh that's i yeah, i hear it you. is it is sometimes yeah. if you really explore you find a spot on them which is like they'll say you know this stimulates me more than my mm. nipples and then mm. you feel like Wow. <laughs> you know like uh, that stuff where goes up like 10 <laughs> times and stuff like that and you know what to work on and stuff yeah. so it's all about exploration you know because their nerves at the end of the day there's so exactly. much to explore in a woman's body for women to explore in a man's body but like when you're limited with your knowledge from porn you just do the same crap all the time mm. you know all the time literally. and um you know i mean this is something you can only feel the third or fourth or fifth spots yeah. can only be figured either yeah. through communication or through experimentation yeah. and mm. it could be as random as your your lobe the back of your yeah, lobe yeah absolutely the yeah. neck mm-hmm. the shoulders it could just be a random part of the body you're not um aware of yeah uh every human being man or woman wants to feel like their body is being explored because sex yeah. at its core is vulnerability yes that's the key to great sex mm-hmm. i feel explore yeah. each other's bodies before you go into the yeah. final act yeah would you absolutely. add anything to this exploration that's what karma sutra teaches you as well sex is not just the act of it it's exploring you know what turns on each other you mm. know and again it starts from the emotional part everything and physical so many so many different things so many different things you know there are women who have said sometimes they orgasm without even penetration oh really yep. L- like you mean by someone going down on them or fingering no not even that no penetration at all just those moments and stuff being in them in in an erotic hug during a massage all of that stuff which shows you the capability of the human body that for an orgasm you don't need that men can orgasm men can orgasm through certain yoga poses and asanas mm. and certain you know when you do this pose called the mula bandha it's not a pose it's a it's a lock mm. you find yourself getting stimulated because all that sexual energy comes alive yeah. kundalini yoga teaches you that it teaches men how to orgasm without act, without a woman even being mm. with them mm. okay so these things show you the reason i'm saying that is it shows you the capability of the human body and the secrets of the human the body. secrets of the human body mm. so that that's what makes exploration huge for us imagine discovering something new you know with your partner or with your lover or what it is you know mm. whatever it is and stuff like that mm. you know i think that's that's very very mm. you know necessary mm. Yeah, I feel. I mean, without revealing too many details, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't know that there's a second spot on a man's body, and most men don't because mm-hmm. all the attention usually goes on your own penis and your yeah. balls. Like mm-hmm. you think it's like everything's yeah. down there, and uh, someone told me, no, no, mm-hmm. that's not true, and helped mm-hmm. me discover that. And I was like, what the f-? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know my the body premium. was. They were talking. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't want to reveal it yeah. because. Okay. I just revealed it. <laughs> <laughs> For me, okay, it's like we a, got run weird spot. Yeah. yeah, it's my yolo man. Uh, like, <laughs> and uh, someone just like placed a kiss on my yolo. Here's the other thing, yeah. right? Um, in bed, there's givers and takers. Yeah. You realize this once you've had sex with more than one person. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, most human beings are takers. Mm-hmm. but i'll give you some advice 100% okay 
you be, I'm, I'm talking as a guy, okay? You be the giver. Hmm. And what you get back is going to come compounded. Bro, I learned the yeah. power of compounding in money maybe at like yeah. the age of 35. Hmm. But the compounding of giving a woman genuine love, sex, foreplay, whatever. And then you just lay back and, and, and it's massive. Be a giver. Yeah. Be a giver. You know, but if you're not getting back, then also, you know, kind of whatever. I, I feel till a certain age of my life. Uh, and yes, I have had my share of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. But till a certain age of my life, I happen to just be with takers. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that yeah. in sex, it is the duty of a man to give. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned this from a YouTuber called Elliot Hulse. He talks okay. very amazingly about the penis and the vagina, the mm -hmm. shapes of it. Mm -hmm. And that's a good representation of not a man's nature, nature but I'd say masculine energy. Mm -hmm. Masculine energy is very... Go out there. Yeah. Do it. Just like mm -hmm. the penis. Yeah. It's shaped forward. Mm -hmm. Feminine energy is very kind of endearing. Correct. Yeah. Taking care. Mm -hmm. Come in. I will help you. Like the vagina. It's got a slot for yeah. the man to put his penis in. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm not saying that all men have that. Oh, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Everyone has a balance of masculine mm -hmm. and feminine energy. And if you feel there's too much of masculine energy in you, you have to inculcate some feminine values. Like yeah. endurance. Like compassion. Like emotional thinking. Like spiritual growth. Yeah. Similarly, if you have too much feminine energy... You need to inculcate some masculine energy traits yeah. like determination, like Correct, bravery, yeah. like risk. Yeah, these are all energies that you have to use. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, but purely when we speak about sex, mm -hmm. I do believe it's a role of a man to really channelize his divine masculine. And it's a role of a woman to channelize her divine feminine. Absolutely. And you know, Ranvi, you make a very good point. There's no fixed rule about this. You know, sometimes the same woman will be like, you know, F the foreplay. I just get straight to it. Mm. And then so some days there are like, you know, she's go slow. It's mm. changing. It's an energy. Mm. It can never remain the same. Sometimes as a guy, you just want to, you know, give and mm. stuff like that. And a woman wants to take it at us. Sometimes you'll want to extend it. So there's no fixed rule about it. They're all different energies depending on who you are in that moment. Mm. How your one hour before your sex started, what were you in that moment? So these mm. are all energies and that's why it should be kept open. And that's why some, some women will say that, you know, you're an, I'm not talking about me. You're an amazing lover. Sometimes it can be rough with me. I want to be, mm. I want to be dominated. I want because that's the energy they're feeling at that time. Mm. You know, so I think that it comes down again to that communication. But the the most beautiful love making is when it unfolds naturally. Mm. It may start off as gentle, move on to really, really wild, in between become gentle again, and it's just flowing mm. because energy flows. Mm. I think that's the most beautiful love making now if i sit i'm gonna say okay uh, tonight i'm gonna start off by going down on her mm. then i'm gonna do this i'm gonna tie her hands behind her back then i'm gonna put her on her knees you know no 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 <laughs> you can't that's you're supporting a vision in your mind and it could be completely different so mm. what you said about these energies is real but they can change according to how she's feeling at that point yeah, yeah. how the man is feeling at that point mm. absolutely right men yes dominate because go back to Go back to uh, the caveman. The job of a man was to inseminate a woman. Create. Mm -hmm. Create all of that stuff. And a woman was meant to, you know, uh, take that egg, become a baby, nurture, all of that stuff. That's how it worked. Today, it's moved into so many, so many, so many different things and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which is okay. It's evolved. It's moved into different. But it doesn't change the fact that, you know, this is what it is for. Mm -hmm. And how, how does science explain that? Every time a man makes love to a woman, okay, ovulation every year, okay, at that time of the month, if you're pregnant, the body's preparing for it. But if you're not pregnant, the sheets fall off and you go back, you know, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. If there's an egg, it will move on. So mm -hmm. the body expects penetrate. I mean, it's it's a natural process. Yeah, yeah. It's a natural process, yeah, you know. Yeah. So this is the beauty of sex and mm -hmm. this is the beauty of the body. There's so yeah. much more depth to all of these. So I will look, I'm, I'm, I want to learn. Tantric sex. I want to learn a line. I think I said, for what? Aren't you happy? I said, mm. Yeah, yeah. But what, what if I can extend an orgasm? I said, great for you. Go ahead and try. But again, I always say, what is your why? Why are you there? No, no, these people, the yogis do it. You do it. No, if you're doing it because a yogi does it, fine. You want to experiment, okay, and stuff like that. No, the happiest people, they make love. They're happy. They build. And that's it. Mm. That's how it is. So mm. everyone chooses their whole thing. But today, the whole thing is, oh, tantric sex. Coordinate my breathing. Okay. <laughs> if you're doing your yoga practice in the morning, you're doing your pranayama, you're already in rhythm. Mm. That rhythm flows into your daily work, conversations, love making, eating, everything. That's the purpose of yoga. Mm. I shouldn't have to do yoga to have a better sex life. It's because I'm doing my yoga, automatically every part of me is functioning in rhythm. Mm. So that's how it does. So coming back to yoga, yes. We have so many people today who have gotten into yoga, sorted out their premature ejaculation. 
you know, issues, a lot of women with, you know, vaginal dryness and all of that stuff, combining their pranayama with their yoga, kundalini yoga, mm. you know, everyone has sexual energy. Yeah. And, uh, and I think your yeah. body's capable of healing itself. Absolutely. Well. Mm. You know, a woman, the amount of sexual energy she carries is something to be in awe of. Yeah. I'll give you a case. I had a lady and she came, you know, and you know, vaginal dryness, all of that, boils, this, that, whatever. So I, I went to, not a food problem, I said, relationship. My husband doesn't make love to me. Mm. I feel unwanted. I feel this. Spoke to the husband. She's saying like, you know, ugh, the honeymoon period is over and stuff. And this is how it is, right? It dies. I said, yes, maybe it dies. But your wife perceives it as feeling unwanted. You know, all of these things. Saying, but I don't feel like, I said, fine. I told her, I asked the woman, I said, do you masturbate? She's saying, look, I can't. That's a sin. So I said, okay, fine. Then you're going to sin. Okay. For the next few days, you're going to masturbate. Okay, and when I have these conversations, I always have a lady nutritionist, so Hardika was with me. I said, Hardika, take this through and stuff like that. One week later, you should see the testimonials that come, that's come in. Why did I make her masturbate? To release sexual energy. Mm. Energy put into, just imagine a pressure cooker. It's going to burst. Women have sexual energy that comes out in not just sex, the way they mother a child the way they defend themselves, the way they protect their children, the way they keep an eye on their husbands. All of this is protect This is sexual energy. It's a beautiful thing. If the woman cannot release it, why does an orgasm feel so great for a woman? Mm. Why do, when we ejaculate, why do we, it's a massive release of sexual energy, mm. which is why like, you know, if you're working on an important project, all of that stuff, and you want all your brain energy, don't masturbate then. Mm. Don't do it then. You're going to decrease all your energy, all of your energy. Do it when maybe you, you want to go to sleep or you're bored or whatever. You're not working on a project. It's an energy release. Mm. And that's why you feel so good. It's like you're stressed right now. Okay, everyone watching this now, take a deep breath. You're going to feel good. You are going to feel good. You've just released so much of energy because right now we're talking shallow breathing and all of that stuff. So sexual energy is such a beautiful thing. Mm. Women build empires driven with sexual energy. Now, most women think, oh, sexual energy, sex, no. It's an energy. Mm. It's a physical energy and it has to be released. Mm. It has to be released yeah. like a man as well. So a man not getting sex in a marriage, okay, becomes frustrated, angry, all of these things. Again, sexual energy is contained. It, mm. Energy has to flow. Mm. That's why you'll have nightfalls, all of these issues and stuff like that. The body has to empty when it needs to empty. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing, sexual energy. I think women should be so proud of sexual energy and work with men to harness this energy. Mm. Harness this energy. Ask any woman the craziest orgasm, okay, would have happened with everything working in sync with each other, not mm. just like that. You pick up a girl, one night stand, you bang each other and stuff like that. I can guarantee you, in most cases, that woman's not orgasm and the guy's just had, it's more of a you know one night excitement mm. kind of a thing under the influence of alcohol, drugs, or just high dopamine, oxygen oxytocin and stuff like that mm. but for real orgasms any woman will tell you i need to feel cared for yeah, yeah. i need to feel loved i need to feel at least respected and stuff like that yeah, you know 100%. so this is how it is um coming back to the actionables yeah um is it safe to say uh that after we've finished off the exploration process mm. in the foreplay wow i'm talking about this like an engineer <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know anyway that that's how a man's mind works okay yeah. men do think in structure yeah. Not all men, but I, I personally have a lot of masculine energy, which I've balanced out over time with yeah. a lot of feminine energy as well. But my natural inclination, because I've gone through engineering college, is yeah. to think in structure and format. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have gone through the exploration, you've kissed, you've like yeah. used your fingers, you know, you've caressed. Um, is oral sex the next step before penetration? See, I just think that, you know, every guy's goal is to get the woman to orgasm mm -hmm. or climax and probably in a hurry if they you know, tend to have premature ejaculation. So the best idea would be the more foreplay, the faster it is once you start penetration to get a mm. woman there. If you're gonna start directly with penetration, like I said, you gotta be the really one in a, I don't know how many men to like, get the woman to climax and orgasm just with pure penetration. And most women don't like it that way. Mm. I mean, there could be some women, I'm not gonna talk for them, but you know, we ask these direct questions. That's how we learn and we get better at counseling people. And yeah, we want foreplay. It means that guy, and look at what they say. Pleasure is the second word versus they're giving us time. They, they, they like us. They love my body. They want to go down on me. Mm. So you see in a woman's mind is working in so many different directions. You mm. get the woman wet. You go down on her. All of that stuff. 
you've prepared. Like I said, it's a well-oiled machine. You've mm. got to get all the levers working the right way. Mm. And then the climax and the yeah. orgasm usually happens the right way. Yeah. You know, so I think that would be mm. definitely the next step. Of course, some women don't like men going down on them. Really? Yeah, a lot of them. Like what's the logic? A, a lot of them. So spoken to a couple of them, a lot of them in certain religions, it is considered disrespectful for the guy to go down on a woman. Okay. And many religions are kind of sexist. <clears throat> yep, absolutely. So a woman brought up with those values that your job is only to give and not to take. Mm. So when a man goes down on these women, they've never had a man go down them mm. at all. For them, it's like an explosion of different emotions. There's a lot of resistance. And again, communication. Because as a man, if you find a woman who's never been gone down on that, that, that would be my first priority. Give her that pleasure. So if you try to force her, it's not going to work. But you ease her into that, ease her into that, ease her. And she, you know, you break the barriers and stuff. Mm. Like that. It's going to be beautiful. Mm. It's going to be, and there are a lot of women who don't like to go down on guys. Mm. Because for them, they've been brought up. And I've asked these women, they're saying, yeah, because, uh, you know, our families told us that men pee from there. So we shouldn't wow. put it in our mouth. Not the woman's fault, but the upbringing. It's like what you tell them at that particular mm. age. So they see it as ah, dirty. Same guys also. How can I go down on her? She pees mm. from there. What if she's not clean? Mm. So everyone's different. But again, through communication, all of that stuff, everything is possible. Mm. And if, if you don't like it, you don't like it. There are other ways to do it. It doesn't mean, oh, no, this is not going to work. My sex life is over. This is over. That is over. You know, there are find other ways to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Find other ways to do it. Completely. You know, I mean, uh, you look at HIV patients. You mm. can't have oral sex. Mm. <clears throat> there are HIV partners who are together. You can't have oral sex. You can't do that. So does that mean they don't have a good sex life? They find other ways to do it. What's the right? logic of that? Like they they have the HIV uh, virus. No, in there, only right? one of them has it. No, no, both. A lot, a lot of them marry, right? Because you, it's very rare for you to find a partner so why if can't, you have HIV and stuff like that. Why can't you have oral sex if you only? Because the, the uh, transmission, right? True oral sex, HIV can be. But if both of them have it anyway. Yeah. Oh. yeah but then you're creating an overload on the immune system, right? The idea oh. is to keep the virus dormant, right? Oh man. So yeah, these are real problems that people. Have. Wow. So. Wow. That's the whole thing. I mean, you don't even have to have a HIV. People should know that through oral sex, you can transmit sexually transmitted diseases mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So the, it's not about that, hey, I, I, you know, I'm no, not going to have penetrated sex. I'm going to go down on this stranger tonight and stuff like that. You still got to be careful of it. You yeah. can still get a sexually transmitted disease through Yeah, that. that's, that's something we need to highlight, which we probably haven't highlighted in this entire podcast. Yeah. Safety. Safety, yeah, man. Absolutely. And there's a lot of STDs flying around. Absolutely. It's there's huge. Lot. And again, people say, oh, I'll get it. I'll get this. But if you get the virus that screws you up, you know, everything's over. Her for you. Herpes and HIV are both huge. Not, huge. not curable either. Uh, it's it's a virus that has to go into remission. So your immune system, the moment, like I have a lot of patients who suddenly get herpes when their immune system falls. Like some, they get oh, flare up. Or rashes and rings oh, and all no. of that stuff. Could be painful, all of that stuff. It, it lives in you. But you keep it in remission. You can live a normal life. If your mm. immune system drops, it comes up again. Yeah. So, so safety first. No Safe, matter what, safety. Safety first. first and be very conscious of who you're exchanging your energy with. Absolutely. I love that. I love what you said. You know, every time a man has sex with a woman and a different woman, you are exchanging different energies and absorbing different energies mm. as well. Mm. This was very well explained to me by, you know, a lady called Christina, who's a sexual, sexual wellness expert. And she told us how it's not just about, you know, pleasure. You are exchanging energies, your energies and that person, that person's energies and you. So, you know, do it with yeah. clarity if yeah. you're going to do yeah. it. Yeah. And it, it can that. really fuck up your head. Like it Absolutely. can mess you up if you're just, you know, sleeping around with multiple people. Also, yeah. the, the spiritual aspect of sex is... Uh, they say that when you choose to have sex with someone, mm -hmm. you're accepting all of their karmas as yours. Yeah, absolutely. It's a sacred thing. Mm. So say, we see it as pleasure. Come on, mm. I'm, a, I'm not going to try and, and be a saint over here. For most of my life in my earlier days, it's seen as pleasure, good bonding and stuff like that. But today, you see it as a very sacred thing. Mm. You know, you are giving your energy to someone else. Mm. You know, someone else is giving your their energy to you. Mm. And then you go home and you have sex with someone else or your partner and stuff. There's a energy mix that's happening that can emotionally affect a man and a woman. Yeah, yeah. But we don't look at these things. So we ask direct questions. How many partners do you have? Mm. You're feeling depressed? Yeah, this, that, whatever. I, I'm sleeping with four different women. <laughs> Let's consider part of your depression is also the mixed energies in you. Mm. Take your medication. That's not your solution. You need to also change these habits. Man. You're strengthening these habits, which yeah. are the wrong habits wow. for you. Wow. 
for you sure. Know? So and uh, a healthy sexual relationship mm. within the confines of a romantic relationship is possibly one of the most enriching things you can go through. I think so. Um, Absolutely. Final aspect of it. Uh, penetration. Two mm. two questions. One for the guys. <clears throat> Actually, you know, I'd probably say uh, this this section of the questions is mainly for the guys. One, okay. if you are dealing with premature ejaculation, is there some kind of mentality you can use to prevent that? Uh, mm-hmm. Or you know, if you're dealing with again erectile dysfunction, if yeah. you start losing your erections after you've gone. And two about uh, I don't know how to put this in a mm-hmm. classy way, but like thrusting like when yeah. when you you're actually in the act of sex yeah what's the are there rules is everyone different everyone's different see for premature ejaculation it's always good not to be ashamed of it and dis- discuss it with your partner okay very very good because the moment see understanding fixes everything mm. they understand now you you're no longer pressurized you're no longer pressurized they understand i'm going to give my best but i try foreplay is very important for people who have premature ejaculation very 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 important or they can't keep it hard long enough and stuff like that you know you want to you know want to use oral sex you want to use the fingers you want to use all of that stuff and there are loads of happy couples living out there where the husband has premature ejaculation the wife understands and they figured ways mm. around it and there are couples that fall apart because they built their whole relationship based on sex and pleasure and stuff mm. like that okay thrusting is very very it, you can look at it differently everyone's different that's why i feel when you are making love to a woman you have to be so include if you're all only thinking that oh shit am i as good as that guy i saw on the porn video today am i performing well does she like it you're missing out on the signals from her mm. so you decide your thrust pace based on her body language mm. based on the sounds she's making and a woman will communicate and always ask they like to be asked mm. like you know do you want it harder do you want it faster is it going well and and every guy she says it's just don't stop it's beautiful mm. you got the pace that's what you want mm. so communication is everything because today she wants it hard tomorrow she wants it slow You, you know it's different all the time but porn mm. teaches you bang like you know just yeah, go yeah, on so yeah. you think wow that's the right way but most women will not want it that way mm. hey, 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 be gentle okay now i want it fast okay fast i'm reaching an orgasm don't stop okay but start off slow so i think it's a beautiful communication process at the end of the day and just stop watching porn i mean once mm. in a way you want to watch a video you're bored you're sitting in a hotel fine do it but i'm saying if you're watching all the time you are preparing yourself for premature ejaculation you are preparing yourself from failure because then the only thing you compare your performance with is this mm. your benchmark of performance is communication mm. with her how did she feel a man knows when he's pleased when she when he's pleased the woman yeah. he knows it's like you've done it she's orgasm and you're like done it yeah. like you know yeah. you yeah. know you know and you know when you haven't and be okay with it you know there's a beautiful affirmation i tell people that you know I'm okay. It's going to be okay. Mm. You know, it's not mm. okay today. It's going to be okay tomorrow. You've mm. not failed. Mm. So people have made sex complicated. It's the simplest thing. Yeah. It's the simplest thing. Mm. It's like making a dish. It's like making. Okay, I'm not going to compare sex to kitchery, even though I like kitchery. You get the ingredients right, the right amount of ghee, the right amount of turmeric, all of that stuff, the right heat and stuff, and you serve it well. That will be a comfort food. It feels so good. The same thing with a woman. Mm. It's I'm not, I'm not saying you're like jigsaw puzzles but it's like putting the pieces of a puzzle together and you put it together and you've got a beautiful picture. You know that's the way I would see it. It doesn't have to be complicated. That's gorgeous. I'd probably conclude by saying that uh do the one thing that enhances any human communication and sex is a human communication mm-hmm. at the yep. end of the day. If you want great sex just be completely present. Yeah. Be aware mm-hmm. and have clarity on the other person. Absolutely. Be compassionate. Absolutely and be okay to ask women. Women like to talk about mm. these things. Mm. You know, I like it if a I like it if a woman says that, you know, hey, you know, what turns you on? What, you know, what all of these things rather than assuming that like just go down on a guy and stuff like that. You know, I think communication is such a beautiful thing, such a beautiful thing. Mm. And sexual energy is also such a beautiful thing. I know people who Uh, this energy builds in them they get sick and stuff it has to be released that's why masturbation is a natural process for a woman and a man mm. it's a natural process it's not something which is bad it's bad if i'm abusing it okay it doesn't make masturbation bad if i'm watching porn video after another and i'm trying to like shag five times in a day obviously you're abusing a you know an intelligent system and stuff like that but it's so natural for a mm. woman to masturbate you know a man a guy to masturbate all of that stuff that woman you know who came and said look it's our fifth year it's our fifth month of marriage and i saw my husband masturbating and i said so what 
So what? Am I not pleasing him enough? I said, you may be pleasing him. You know, whatever. He's masturbating doesn't mean he loves another woman. He's thinking of another woman or whatever. I said, for all you know, a lot of women, while they're on top of a man, they're thinking of another guy, a wrestler, an actor, whatever. These are fantasies. This doesn't mean they don't love you. You're doing it all the time. You have a problem. It's as simple as that. Mm. So I think you've got to break down these complications and not hold on to it. Mm. Not hold on. Your guy is sleeping in the night and he has a nightfall. What are you going to say to him? You're going to say, oh, you, you, you were thinking of another woman and you came and stuff like that. No, it's a nightfall. There's science to back it up. So I think people should uncomplicate sex so you feel the essence and the beauty of it. Yeah. It's yeah. non-complicated. It really is. And the beauty of the simplicity of sex is in our own. We, as Indians, we should be so proud of Kama Sutra. Mm. Just read it. People think, oh, look, Kama Sutra. Positions, I learn positions. No, you learn a way of life through Kama Sutra. What a beautiful book. Mm. What a beautiful book. And if you look at the images in Kama Sutra, do you see models? The guy has a paunch, the woman has a paunch, but they have the most ecstatic sex lives because it's not about how you look. It's not about whether you have a six pack, you have a whatever and stuff like that. That's the beauty of Kama Sutra. And I think everyone should read Kama Sutra to understand that sex is so much beyond just pornography. Once you reach Kama Sutra, you realize that porn is just a joke. Mm. Just a joke. You want to hit it off quickly, watch a quick video, fine, good. But you really want to learn the essence of sex, read Kama Sutra. It'll change your life and the way you look at women, mm. the way you, you look at yourself, your own sexual energy as a man. Mm. It changes the way you look mm. at, you know, sex. Yeah, man. Sex is one of those topics that we can keep breaking down. I'm sure that this isn't the last podcast based on sex that we're doing. So mm -hmm. I would request listeners, watchers to post your questions down below. Uh, take active part in growing the podcast. Share the podcast with your friends. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're listening to this on YouTube. Make sure your notifications are on. And what I'd also request, knowing my big brother Luke Coutinho, is that we will be doing more episodes, but you have to check out the older episodes we've done together. Uh, Luke, what do you think? Wow, I'm making this about me again. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Yeah. Why, why, why are we able to like speak like this and uh, like I, it's it, intention bro i mean what, what what's the big deal about not speaking about sex the intention over here is so pure there's so much i've learned to it so people think i'm talking about it because oh luke must have had so many women and stuff and he's talking about it it's not that i've had mm. my share i've done my stuff that doesn't make me an expert I've learned from my profession mm. because every second or third person has a problem with sex, yeah. problem with understanding and relationships. So I learn from them. I'm sharing it over here because that's what's going to grow. That's the change we're going to make. So today, one guy out there can say like, fuck, I'm going to reduce my porn. We've made impact. Mm. We've changed someone's world. Yeah, yeah. It's as simple as that. And that's all that matters, yeah. right? You're a gift to this world, man. Like, <laughs> so are you. <laughs> so are you, bro. I'm just glad I get to create content with you. I am, I'm, forget the content. I'm bro, you know what? I'll go back. I know it may sound cheesy, but everyone is a gift to the world. But the sad part is everyone's not using that gift. Mm. Everyone's a gift to the world. Every child born is a gift to their parents, a gift to the world. People should be encouraged to find a gift and go out there and use it. That's what your purpose, that's what your life purpose is. If you've been given a gift and you're not using it, you've wasted a life. Mm. You've wasted a life. So everyone's a gift, but sadly people are not using that gift that they've been given. Everyone, even a disabled, physically challenged person has a gift. And you'll see that. Musicians who are deaf have created the most beautiful music that people who have their hearing cannot create today. Yeah, yeah. Gift. They chose to use it rather than sit there and say, I don't, I'm victimized and mm. stuff. So everyone's a gift. I just want people to find that and use it. That's when the world is going to change automatically. Automatically. Yeah. So, um, so much more to create with you, man. So <laughs> many more questions yeah, to we'll ask do it. you. We'll do it. Uh, I, again, every time I speak to you, I get overwhelmed. And that's why I'm probably just going to end this particular podcast. Luke, if there's one content piece that you and me have created, mm -hmm. I know you're conscious of everything we've created. We had the, the first interview, which was just a brief look into yeah, your mind. Yeah. The <clears> second <throat> one, which was about... We did some on fasting. Yeah, about health. some health on LSD. LSD. We did yeah. some on... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we did one more. We did the LSD and ayahuasca one. Ayahuasca, yes, yes. Yeah. We did that as well. Uh, we so, just <clears throat> did one right before this, which was a deep look at your life and mental right. toughness. Mental toughness, yeah. Yeah. And this is our fifth piece together, man. Yeah. Five out of maybe 5,000 yeah. coming up. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we'll do it. We'll of do all it. those pieces, which one would you push people towards the most? 
Mm, I, I think I would push them to the mental toughness part. Mm -hmm. Because see, mental toughness is everything. If you don't have it, you can't intermittent fast. Mm -hmm. You'll give up in between, example. So I think you need mental toughness for everything. Mm. Like, you know, you, you give people, you share so much of knowledge on how to build. You share your skills with people. You've given them the best content for skill building. But if they don't have mental toughness, what do they do with it? Mm. So I would put mental toughness first. For your sex life to be better, you need mental toughness. If you think you're a failure in bed, you're never going to be good in bed. Again, mm. mental toughness. Mm. So I would put mental toughness first. Okay. First, um, yeah. And a selfish reason of calling you on this podcast is that you have a gorgeous mind and a gorgeous face. <laughs> and we get Thanks, more bro. lady listeners on this show and they are honestly driving the growth of this show, uh, right. telling their friends, telling their family. Uh, request for the lady listeners from one Mr. Luke Cotino <laughs> and myself. Keep watching, keep listening, keep gaining value. Luke, any yeah. signing off note, especially for the women? I, I just think that, you know, uh, I love women who are empowering themselves today. Mm. You know, I just want to say it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I honestly, you know, teach people that it's okay to be disliked. And by teaching them that, I reassure myself that everyone doesn't have to love you. So I'm going to say what I have to say. I removed all my masks, right? Mm. At the start of the show, an empowered woman stands up for her own values. She doesn't need to become part of groups, you know, that push certain points in a way, you know, you're empowered to gain your own self-respect, build your own values, do it on your own. You don't have to fight to try to change the way men and society work. It's never going to change. It's never going to change, you know? So what I'm trying to say is empower yourselves. I mean, I know incredible women today who have built empires, empires. They're juggling family life. I mean, my wife, Natasha, yeah, I, I, she's a superwoman. Like everything that I am today, I am for what I do with my people, but she's running the entire business. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are so many women out there. And you know, the difference between these women, they follow the path. They follow the path. And there's a whole group of other women who try to become activists, not in a negative way. And they're trying to make a point and a point and a point and a point. I mean, you know, what about the other women who have built it? They said like, Yep. I'll go through these obstacles and I will do it. I'm saying be that woman. I'm not preaching to you. 100%. I'm not preaching to you. I'm saying be that woman because there are women who have done that. And there are women out there. Since you asked me a question about women, I'm only speaking about women. I, I think uh, women are just this beautiful source of energy. They play such an important role in a man's life, in their own life. You know, I want women to be empowered, to mm. build their identities and stuff like that. Don't go to these extreme groups that try to pull down the male community all the time. Yes, there are bad male behaviors that need to be corrected and all of that stuff. There are a lot of women out there who are hurt in previous relationships hearts broken doesn't mean you all men are like that that was mm. the problem in your relationship don't pull down all men all men are not just after your body sex don't put yourself on a pedestal you know empower yourself instead of draining your energy in this whole feminist thing be a feminist mm. but don't make it extreme don't well, create yeah. hatred between the man community and the woman community we want equality for y'all mm. we want equality y'all mm. have proven it to us y'all can earn more money than men y'all can build empires y'all can lead industries y'all can become billionaires millionaires we respect that value that do it that way don't do it by pulling down communities pulling down other women making women giving them limited knowledge that oh don't do this you know your man said this end the relationship right now no, don't do that. Let them figure it out. Let them try. I'm not saying you're, if the woman's being beaten up, accept that. Teach them how to evolve in a relationship. Don't just say, oh, he said that. It's not going to last. Get out of the relationship right now. Mm. Men are like this. Don't do that. So as a woman, have your own mind. Have your own mind and your own logic. Look inside. Get your own power. Don't look for validation all the time. If you need 10 of your girlfriends to tell you to break up with a guy, all your relationships are going to fail. Mm. Take opinions, mentorship, but what's my heart telling me? Should I give it a chance? Should I give in the throw in the towel? Be your own woman. Be your own woman. That's my advice. Beautiful. Yeah. Look, and I hope <laughs> that this podcast based on love and sex actually brings the world <laughs> to a better place. Honestly, that's the intention. Again, from the bottom of my heart, brother. Thank you. Pleasure, bro. Good seeing you always. always Enjoyed this conversation with you. Always great learning yeah. from you, man. And until next time, we will see you guys later with Luke on the Ranveer Show again. See you. Awesome.